Okay, section 8.4, we're about to wrap this up. Um, here is another nice example. Um, it says the Faber College Athletic Hall of Fame building features, um, features a statue of a large softball that is in need of painting. The softball has a diameter of eight and a half feet. Determine the surface area of the softball. All right, so we, basically we have a sphere. That's what we have. A softball is a sphere. And it tells us this is a, it's got a diameter of eight and a half feet. So, so all the way from here to here is eight and a half. So half of that's going to be 4.25 is going to be the radius. That's what we know. All right. So the surface area for a sphere is 4 pi r squared. So 4 pi r squared. So that's 4 times pi times 4.25 squared. And so when I multiply all that together, I get 226.98 square feet. All right. If one quart of paint covers about 100 square feet, how many quarts of paint does she need? Well, we need this many, this much coverage, and each quart covers 100 square feet. So we're going to take this and divide it by 100, and that's going to give us 2.2698. So basically, we're going to round up and say we need three quarts of paint to cover the softball. All right, here's another good example. I love the name. Cletus has three silos on his farm. The silos are each in the shape of a right circular cylinder. One silo has a 12 foot diameter and is 40 feet tall. Another one is 14 feet diameter and 50 feet tall and the third is 18 feet diameter and is 60 feet tall. What is the total capacity of all three silos in cubic feet? So what we're going to do is we're going to add the volume of each of these and add them together. So the volume of the first one is pi r squared. The radius is going to be 6 feet times h. And the volume of this guy, the volume of this guy is going to be pi r squared. The, the radius is 7. the height. And the volume of the third is going to be pi. R is going to be 9. R squared times the height, which is 60. And if I add these up, it turns out that he has got a total volume of 27,488.95 cubic feet. Okay. <clears throat> That's the answer to A. Now, if Cletus want, fills all three of his silos and then feeds his cattle 150 cubic feet of silage per day, in how many days will all three be empty? All right. He's, he's given them this much per day, and, we, it fill, and then they're filled to be this much. So we simply need to divide. So if we divide this by 150, we get... 183.25. So if we divide this by 150 cubic feet, how many times will this go in? Um, he can feed them. It's going to be empty after 183 days. It will be empty. All right, so now this next part is going to go really fast because I'm just going to introduce you some new terms and new um, figures. There's something called a polyhedron. And what it is, it's a closed surface formed by the union of, poly, of polygonal regions. Polygonal regions. So the plural for polyhedron is polyhedra. So this, and these are some examples of some um, some polyhedron. So they have what's called, they're joined by together by other polygonal regions, 
And so this is a cube, basically, but you see this has a face, which is a, a square, and it's joined with a square, and it makes a cube. And so where the, the sides come together is called an edge, and the corner is called a vertex. So this one's a little bit hard to see, but this is triangles. It's a triangle, a triangle, a triangle. It's four triangles. You can see the base there. And this is kind of um, triangles on the bottom and the top. And this is a, um, looks like a trapezoidal shape that they've made. So this is just a little polyhedron formula. Um, I just want to introduce this to you. This is just a truth that he figured out. Any polyhedron that you have. You can take the number of vertices, which means the corners, and you can subtract the number of edges, which means the seams where they kind of come together, and you can add the number of faces, and you will always get the number two. So this is just, I wanted to show you how this works. So we're gonna do this one time. You can do it on your own with this, with, you can do it on your own with the cube. I'm gonna do it with the, with the triangle figure. So if we look at the number of vertices that we have, that is where the corners meet. So there's a corner here, a corner here, a corner here, and a corner here. So that is four, okay. Now we're gonna subtract the number of edges. Edges are where the seams, where they come together. So there's one right there, one, two, three, and on the bottom, four, five, six. There's six of these guys. And then we're gonna add the number of faces. So there's one side, here's the second face, there's one back here I can't see, and there's one on the bottom, so there's four of these. So I'm gonna say four minus six is negative two. Negative two plus four is two. This is always gonna be true. So I did it for this figure. You can try it on your own for that one. Um, a regular polyhedron is a polygon, or a polyhedron whose polyhedron whose faces are all regular polygons of the same shape and size okay and they also have a special name which is called platonic solid a platonic solid and there are exactly five that exist. So on the next page, we're gonna see what those look like. This is what they look like. There's five of these guys. One's called a tetrahedron. One is called a cube. One is called an octahedron. One is called a dodecahedron. And one is called a icosahedron. I don't know how to say that. This is a soccer ball though. So you've seen that one. All right. Now here is the word uh, prism. A prism is a special type of polyhedron whose bases are congruent polygons and whose sides are parallelograms. So here are some examples of right prisms, and that's what they'll be referring to in this book if, if you deal with prisms. So you see that um, the base here is a regular polygon, an equilateral triangle, and it's just extended. The base here is a, a square and it's just extended. The base here is a hexagon and it's just extended. And the base here is a trapezoid and it's just extended. Um, a pyramid is a special category of polyhe polyhedral and it has only one base though. See, these have two bases. A prism has two bases. A pyramid just has one base and extended to a point like that. So these are pyramids. All right. Now, the volume of a prism is equal to the area of the base, area of the base 
times the height. So it would be the area of the base times however high it is. So whatever kind of base shape you have times the height. So that would depend on what kind of figure you have. The area of the base times, I can't even see this height. I'd have to draw the height. I can't see, oh no, this is the height. That's hard to see. The base times the height. And the volume of a pyramid is one third the area of the base times the height. All right, now for just a couple of quick examples, right here. Frank's fish tank is in the shape of a hexagonal prism. So, um, we're going to use the dimensions that they gave us to figure out the volume of the fish tank in cubic inches. So, first let's look at what they gave us. We have this, this is a prism, it's a hexagon extended. So this is the height from, from the base to the height of the tank is 24 inches. So this is the height. We just saw that the volume of a prism is equal to the area of the base times the height. All right, the base is this hexagon. So let's think about this. This hexagon here, this is the hexagon. If I divide it in half, I see that I've got, let me do a better picture, that's a terrible picture. So we've got, oh, my dog is just making me nervous because she won't calm down, but it's okay, we're gonna make it. So this is half of the base. See how half of it is a trapezoid and then it's just doubled? So this is mirrored over here. So to figure out the area of the base, I'm gonna use the formula for the area of a trapezoid, but I'm gonna multiply it by two. So two times the area of a trapezoid, which is one half the height times the bases added together is gonna be the area of the hexagon. So two times one half is just a one. So that's a one. The height of this guy is from here to here. This is the height. So if I look at this guy, it's from here to here. But they told me that from here to here is eight inches and from here to here is eight inches. So the height is eight. So I have a two times a one half, but if I multiply that together, I'll get a one. And then the base here is this whole length here, and they show me that that's 16. And the short base is from here to here, and they told me that that is eight. So if I add all that up, I'm gonna get the area of the um, hexagon, which is gonna give me, um, it's going to give me, what? I think I did this a little bit wrong. It's going to give me 96, but i got to multiply that by 2, which gives me, I'm not sure. Let me figure this out real quick. Let me double check. So I have 16 plus 8 times 8 is 192 cubic inches. So that is the volume of my tank right there. Okay, so now is that right? I have got something funny. Oh no, because that was just the hexagon. Okay, so that is, this is the hexagon. So now I got to multiply, that is the area of the base. And now I'm going to multiply that by the height of the tank, which is 24. So when I multiply 192 times 24, I'll get the volume of the tank, which is 4,608 cubic inches. So this is how much, that is the answer to A, 4,608 cubic inches. Now, how much is this in gallons? Well, they tell us that one gallon is equal to this, so I'm just going to convert. 4608 cubic inches times, I want it to turn into gallons, divided by 231 cubic inches. These will divide out. Divided by 231 gives me 19.95. So this is about a 20 gallon tank right there. All right. Let's do some conversions. This is not that hard. We already did this one. 
Um, there are 12, have I done this yet? Okay, there is three feet. Three feet is equal to one yard. So if I need to know how many feet are in a cubic yard, I'm gonna cube both sides of this. Three times three times three, or three cubed is 27. Feet times feet times feet is feet cubed is equal to one yard cubed. This is A. B, we gotta change 5.7 cubic yards into cubic feet. So I put the cubic feet up here and the cubic yards down here and I look over at my conversion factor and there's 27 cubic feet and one cubic yard. These will cancel. I multiply 5.7 times 27 and I get 153.9 cubic feet for part C. I have 843.75 cubic feet and I want to turn this into yards. So I'm going to put the cubic feet in the denominator and the cubic yards in the numerator. One goes with the yards, 27 goes with the feet. So this time I'm dividing this number 843.75 divided by 27 and I get 31.25 cubic yards. All right, last one. Tenzina recently purchased a home with a rectangular swimming pool. <clears throat> the pool is 30 feet long, 15 foot wide, and has a uniform depth of 4 feet, 4.5 feet. She plans to fill the pool with dirt to make a flower garden. How many cubic yards will she need to fill the pool? So here is her pool. She's got, and she doesn't want to swim. She wants to plant a garden in it, so that's fine. It's 30 feet by 15 feet, and it is 4.5 feet deep. So what is the volume? It's 15 by 30 by 4.5. So the volume of her pool area is 20, 2,025 cubic feet. But if we need to know how many cubic yards this needs, we want to use a conversion factor and I want to get rid of the feet. So I'll put the cubic feet down here. I'll put the cubic yards up here and 27 goes with the feet and one goes with the yards and these will cancel. So if I take 2,025 and divide it by 27, I get exactly 75 cubic yards. So that is how much um, dirt she's gonna need to fill her pool.